from um, a DJ called Darius Cyrorussian. I'm assuming he's one of those kind of tech housey DJs, right? I'm not too familiar with him. But he put a tweet out. Basically, because I think he's been... Um, I think some people are getting called out, especially some electronic music artists who are persisting with their gigs and going forward with their dates they have booked in. They're kind of promoting them out there and stuff. And some of it is kind of due to the fact that, unfortunately, we DJs are paid are only paid when they're present, right? They You can't... If you cancel a gig, you can't get paid for that gig you canceled. You can only get paid for things that you play at. Maybe some DJs have a, uh, a system in place where they might get... I don't know, some sort of cancellation fee. I don't know, but for the most part, being a DJ, you, if in order to get paid, you have to go to a place. You have to be physically there. So that kind of limits the amount of income they're able to make, which is why I think ages ago I suggested, or well, I was surprised by a lot of DJs, especially in this era where everyone's so hungry for merch and pay, and there's patrons are a big thing. Uh, I don't, I'm don't. i surprised why there's not many, more, not more DJs doing like a patron-only group where you sign up for a certain amount a month and you get to hear Dixon talk about the inspiration behind an album or the inspiration behind a mixtape, or behind a mix, or behind an edit, or a remix, or just in general, it's thoughts. I think that would do really well, or just like, you know, patron-only DJ mixes. Or the other thing that I thought would be very beneficial is if DJ just sold merch, right? Imagine you've got some designers on Everpress to design you some sick merch, and during your tour, you just sold that after the tour. You had a big box of stuff, you put it in your luggage, and you just slang it from the booth just people like cash in hand 20 pounds 20 pounds maybe you had a little izetto machine people just tapped in and bought your merch i think that'd be pretty sick and i would again i would be really down for it because i think a lot of dj merch especially some of the djing in general or electronic music in general it kind of attracts people from far and wide right so some of my favorite artists or djs they're from far flung places all over the globe so sometimes i'm a bit hesitant about ordering stuff online because it just takes too long to come here right and you're not sure if it's going to come anyway but if i had the possibility of seeing a zip Right, of seeing like a Ricardo Villalobos, a Raresh, uh, God, the answer probably will never do much, but like a you know, uh, a young Marco playing somewhere who I love, right? And they and they happen to say, Hey, by the way, I've got some merch to sell, here it is. That'd be pretty cool. The only person I've seen doing it so far, um, was a shot. Wait, who was it? Who did the merch? Someone did really good merch recently that I thought was really nice, but it was kind of done in a very you know, and un- not undercover, but in a like kind of you know, low way. I think Peggy Goo does some merch too, but she does like. That's not that's not much. That's more like fashion, isn't it? She does those really cool, look, uh, short sleeve kind of uh, bowler shirt things, right? She has to do some merch like that. Good talk, right? Um, that's really nice. But I think she might be the only one. Like maybe it's a kind of a it's a kind of a cringe thing. People don't really want to do it. But I think in moments like this, it shows that there might be a need to kind of you know allow yourself to get a bit more extra income, especially if you don't make any tracks. You should be able to, um, you know, uh balance or kind of add to your income in some way shape or form because you know there's only so many gigs you can take in it there's only so many clubs and festivals out there but anyway i'm assuming this darius guy got a lot of stick for playing uh through the coronavirus outbreak i think post malone got the same sort of backlash too but you know it depends where you're playing at. if you're playing in a place where the coronavirus isn't as serious as a pandemic is in other places and the government says it's okay for people to gather in, in large groups then you just have to do it in it oh obviously there's some promoters who are kind of hiding behind that as a point not to counter the events, you have to refund people. But I'm also sympathetic to the promoters and, and the event organizers because they had no idea. They, they're not putting on these events to make tons of money. They're putting on this event to kind of just throw a party, right? And have that as part of your CV because it's fun to tell people that you are, you know, you are the person behind this amazing party promotion that everyone's heard of. It's quite a cool thing to know. But anyway, let's get back to this Darius thing. He kind of justified his reason behind it. I thought it was a pretty cool person. Kind of uh, spoke really well in situations at hand now with the electronic music space and how we should maybe reframe the way we look at it. And if you are someone that's a bit skeptical or cynical about it, kind of view it from the artist's point of view. So here's the following. Um, if you want those giving me grief for doing my job last night, please also give uh, teachers, waiters, etc. grief too. There's no difference. We're just doing our job. When, when told not to, we will stop. P.S. I'm going to do what the country's chief scientific advisor says, not you. Definitely agree with that one. So here's the following. I love that sentiment, isn't it? Like I said, there's such a war on intellectualism or war on expertise that people are, you know, I don't know, especially, you know, who, 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 who was that aware of coronaviruses, right? Or COVID, you know, 19 before this thing, you know, kind of uh, permeated the public consciousness. Who was really aware of it? Now, all of a sudden, after a couple of Google searches, everyone's kind of aware of what you shouldn't or shouldn't do and it's telling other people to live their lives it's just not on in it really it's a bit out of order but anyway here's the following he said yeah for those attacking me for honoring my gig last night please read one 
Me leaving my house to play some records and going home has the same risk as you going out of your house to buy food and going home. Agree. If I didn't play my gig number two, uh, the event will still go ahead. It wasn't my party. It's not my club. I don't take ticket sales. I get a fee to play records. And number three, if the chief scientific advisor, the chief scientific advisor, so the country, uh, Saint Patrick, uh, Sir Patrick Valance has said, for now, there is no need to ban gatherings, clubs, schools, and restaurants, etc. Um, which I don't really agree with. I think that Patrick Valance has got a little bit of stick. I think a lot of uh, doctors and GPs have kind of, or doctors and nurses have come out and, and kind of signed an open letter, which essentially calls, calls him out and says there should be some preventive measures put in place to avoid the situation becoming bleak and becoming a lot more grave than it is now. Um, obviously, maybe Patrick Valance has got some kind of point. So Sir Patrick Valance has a point in terms of um, now, we don't deserve to panic now. But there should be some preventive measures being put into place where there is a suggestion, maybe, you know, let's ban events, you know, more than 250 people so that people aren't gathering in nightclubs and bars, but they maybe are able to go out and stuff. That might be a solution. But anyway, what can you do? So it continues here. Um, if you're giving me grief, it's no different to giving a teacher grief or a waiter grief. We are all doing our job. People spent a lot of money on hotels, travel tickets to see me play. If I didn't turn up, I disappointed them, but the event would, would have... Would, ha would, would still have to go on ahead of or without or without me finally this virus is not going away isolation or not the experts have a plan and i'm going to trust their word over any jumped up idiot who wants to attack me for just doing my job which is a bit much really i think it needs to chill out and wind it in a bit i think people are a bit uh, nervous and a bit afraid naturally so because this virus you know is essentially taking out you know vast amounts of our population maybe some in some in some places it's been projected to take out maybe five to ten percent of the population sometimes they're older sometimes it could be younger um and it's something that's now going to be with us for a long period of time maybe forever right um there are different strains of a coronavirus of a, of a coronavirus sorry that i found out now having done a bit of research myself so it's something that we have to live with we're probably going to have a vaccine uh you know what's it safe estimates are saying in 18 months which is a long time from now and it's going to get worse before it gets better which is something that you've kind of heard from a lot of professionals so if people are, are kind of a bit aghast why anyone would want to choose to go to a dj play over sitting at home and being safe i think it's perfectly fine to and again so maybe it's a false equivalency to you know ascribe going to a nightclub you know um for like 10 to 12 hours or whatever it may be um, to going out to Tesco's and buying a loaf of bread to feed your family, right? Um, how bad would you feel that you went to a nightclub to go see a DJ play? Or how bad would the DJ feel going to a nightclub to go play for however, however much money that is and then somehow being contracted with the virus? Would, the, would that gig money be worth your health and putting your family to je in jeopardy? Probably not. So again, I don't think it's the right of people or commentators to tell you what to do with your life, with your DJing career. And again, I have sympathy for DJs. Because I'm a DJ myself, a much lower level. But I know if I was a professional DJ, my my wage and my life and my you know uh, my mortgage relied on me, my ability to play gigs. And one of the gigs that I was playing on the weekend got cut out. That's essentially some money that's not coming into my account. It's not allowing me to feed my family and not allowing me to kind of be safe in general, right? Uh, there is no union set up for DJs. There's no kind of safety net. I'd imagine it's pretty difficult. So I do get sympathy for it. And again, from the promoter side, I haven't been a promoter myself. I also know that, you know, some of the some of the monies that you get maybe up front from tickets or whatever they may be, that might have already been spent to pay the DJ or to secure the venue. So you're you're literally running on negatives regardless to begin with, right? And the last thing that you want is to cancel the event and then to be hit with tons of refund requests. That's obviously gonna kill you too. So I definitely respect and understand where they're coming from, but I also think Darius needs to chill out a bit and think, you know, people aren't attacking him because they think he's a bad guy. They're attacking him because they think it's irresponsible to choose raving over maybe being, you know, a bit precautious and sacking it off for the week and seeing how things develop. But again, I, I sympathy for both sides. I think it's a really unique situation and hopefully uh, we get to a point where things kind of risk go back to some kind of